हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मेरी इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस आर नेटर चीफ इंजीनियर रवि गुप्ता टुडे विल टॉक अबाउट इंसिनेटर रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन एज पर मारपुर एनएक्स सिक्स इन टुडे वीडियो वी विल सी व्हाट आर द थिंग्स वी कैन बर्न इन द इंसिनेटर आफ्टर दैट वी विल सी व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय कंटीन्यूअस फीड इंसिनेटर एंड व्हाट इज द बैच लोड ऑफ इंसिनेटर एंड व्हाट इज द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन व्हाट आर द स्लज ऑयल कंपोनेंट और सॉइल वेट कंपोनेंट मींस व्हाट आर द लिमिट्स ऑफ द इंसिनेटर्स and after that we are see further detail regulations so today video is going to be interesting i guarantee after watching the video you will have a complete knowledge of a rules and regulation of the ensign rater so before starting the ensign rater video i want to tell marine engineering has a platform which make video like this which will be beneficial for your examination interview and your oral examination so i request you to please subscribe many of you are seeing it and after that you don't subscribe but If you want to again watch the other video, such as seabage, boiler, and other type, you can go to playlist and you can see. So please do subscribe. So let's start the today video of incinerator. So what is an incinerator? So basically, a incinerator is a equipment which is provided on board for burning the solid waste and the sludge. So the incinerator equipment. which is provided on board the main aim is to burn the solid waste and the sludge in a proper rules and regulation way it should be burned in such a way that it does not produce hazardous gases which are harmful to the environment and it does not threaten the safety of the ship so we have made the rules and regulation in the incinerator now let's see what are the component of the incinerator so this is a two chamber incinerator the first chamber is called primary combustion chamber the second chamber is called secondary combustion chamber in the primary combustion chamber you can see there is a two pocket the one pocket is for the sludge burner and the other pocket is for the primary burner the primary burner help during the initial time for the combustion through diesel oil pump and the second sludge burner is assisted during the initial phase of combustion and after that it is self ignited the whole working of the incinerator i will explain in the upcoming video in today video i will just explain the component so this is the feeding door from where we feed the solid waste and this is a ceramic wall which is separating the primary and secondary combustion chamber this is a fan it provide air for a combustion chamber and this is the flue gas outlet so there are two pump one is the diesel oil pump for the primary burner and second is the sludge oil pump for the sludge burner the third is a primary blower for providing the combustion air and the fourth is the outlet so this is overall component of a engine rotor now actually it look like this you can see two pump one is the this is sludge oil burner pump or waste oil pump this is the primary burner and this is the primary blower this is the sluice door from where you feed the solid waste and this is the various thermal couple and the sensor for the safety check okay now let's see rules and regulation of the incinerator So, if your incinerator is installed after first January two thousand, then you should follow Appendix four and IMO regulation, which has been mentioned in the IMO. So, what thing we can burn or which are prohibited in an incinerator? The first is the Annex one, Annex two, and Annex three, cargo residue. Means whatever the cargo residue which if you are carrying any cargo of annex 1 category annex 2 category or annex 3 category you cannot burn in incinerator okay after that pcb polycarbonated biphenyl this polychlorinated biphenyl is also not allowed to burn in incinerator garbage which are under annex 5 containing heavy metal such as lead is also not allowed to burn refined petroleum product are also not allowed to burn now the often question is asked that the first interviewer asks okay 
what things are not allowed so you will say this so he will, they will say ask also that why why you are prohibiting this the reason is that these Annex 1, Annex 2, Annex 3 or Annex 5 or refined protein product when during the burning is producing such gases which are harmful to the environment and also the reaction which are happening inside the incinerator may create an explosive environment because of this cargo and may cause an explosion. So to avoid that this cargo is been this cargo residues and these things are prohibited. One more time I will tell you. So basically what is happening all this annex cargo residues packing material or garbages may contain certain element which during the combustion inside the incinerator may produce certain gases which are harmful to the environment and also the reaction inside the incinerator body the reaction inside the incinerator may be such that it may create a explosive environment which may explode the incinerator so to prevent that we are prohibiting this now if what we can burn so sewage sludge and sludge oil which are generated on board can be burned in the incinerator or in the boiler okay but if it is not generated on board then you cannot burn it after that PVC like plastics sometimes the interviewer asks whether you can burn plastic so you should know what you want to ask basically plastic are not allowed to be burned in the incinerator but with the development in technology there are certain incinerator which can burn plastic so you have to see the type approval certificate of your incinerator what do I mean by type approval certificate so basically what is happening when the incinerator is made by the manufacturer they in front of IMO demonstrate the functioning of the incinerator while demonstration it will check that even if the plastic is burned in that time the gases which are produced are within limit or not if it is within limit then you can burn the plastic so that is why if the interviewer asks that whether you can burn the incinerate plastic in the incinerator or not your answer should be like this okay after that there should be an operating manual and the person who are operating should be well trained very important so now you know this incinerator basically is a not a simple device it's a very complicated device because you are continuously feeding the sludge or waste oil for burning and if the feed rate is not proper it may create a explosive environment so it should be operated by a personnel who are knowingly all the proper equipment function so basically in onward sometime what happened the motorman or the wiper are told to operate the incinerator that is not a good practice it should be operated by at least fourth engineer under the supervision of second engineer and chief engineer because there has been an incident where the explosion of incinerator has been caused because of the negligence in operation now there is a rules and regulation regarding continuous feed and batch load type incinerator it has been told that in continuous feed type incinerator in continuous feed type incinerator you should not feed the sludge oil it means that whenever you are feeding the sludge oil inside the primary combustion chamber you should not feed it unless the temperature inside the combustion temperature is been reached above 850 degree Celsius one more time I will tell you it say that you should not feed sludge oil unless the temperature is reached more than 850 degree Celsius and the temperature during the operation should be around 850 to 1200 so it means that whenever you are using you continuous feed type incinerator in that case the temperature inside should be above 850 and while during the operation the temperature should maintain around 850 to 1200 degree Celsius it means that this 
pump sludge oil pump will only get activated after the temperature inside the incinerator is reached above 850 degrees celsius and it will continue remain activated till the temperature is in the range of 850 to 1200 but if the temperature reach above 1200 it should cut off and again allow it to cool down with the help of this primary blower okay now for batch load type it say that after the incinerator is started means now suppose you have started the incinerator so the temperature inside the combustion chamber should reach at least 600 degree within the period of 5 minutes okay and you should only be allowed to feed if the temperature is stabilized above 800 degree celsius so why i am telling all this so basically the sire inspector or the psc inspector sometimes coming on board and saying okay you operate the incinerator and when you operate the incinerator after that what happen they will check the timing with the watch they will check okay your uh, is not coming in 5 minutes 600 celsius so you should say okay sir this is not the continuous type it is is not a batch type it is a continuous feed so it will not come like that you should have a knowledge that which type of incinerator you should have on board so that you can counteract sometime the psc inspector to prevent any unwanted deficiency now no incinerator is allowed outside the incinerator it means suppose like you want to do some incinerator in a drum not allowed now what are the certificates and how you are getting certificates so basically there is a type approval certificate as i told you you will only get once you have carried out the approval test under the responsibility of a administrator and get it certified it means that in front of a imo administration you have to make your machine make your equipment function properly so that they will give you a certificate so before any type of incinerator comes in the market they have to get pass through the imo administration type approval certificate and then once it has been approved then only you can install on board now what should be the constituent of the sludge oil or solid waste as per marpol so sludge oil should else consist of 75% of a heavy fuel oil 5% are the waste lubricating oil and 20% it can be of emulsified water the solid waste should at least consist of 50% food waste or 50% rubbish containing approx 30% paper 40% cardboard 10% rags and 20% plastic so these things they will not ask but just for your knowledge you should know now this they will sometime ask that what are the limits of the incinerator so you should know at least some limit like oxygen in the combustion chamber should always be in between 16 to 12% the carbon monoxide in the flue gas average should be around 200 mg per mega joule when you are operating the incinerator at that time the suit number should be ringelmann 1 at the time of operation in the time of starting up it may reach little bit higher but during the operation it should have only ringelmann 1 the same also applied for boiler also the unburned component in the ash residue should maximum be 10% by weight it means that if you are burning in the incinerator 100% suppose 100 kg of incinerator thing then only 10% by weight it means by that only 10 kg can only remain that there as a ash other 90 kg should burn after that the combustion chamber flue gas outer temperature should reach around 850 to 1200 degree celsius now in a synopsis what is a incinerator so you should know that incinerator is a shipboard garbage disposal system and it has been made because it is a evidence that you are using or following the rules and regulation of a marpol and after that it dictate what are the liter per hour you are burning the sludge and it also consist of a approval from the class and it also deprecate what are the quantity of sludge incinerator 
and the incinerator should only be operated by the crew who is been trained now type approval certificate basically is given to all the incinerator which are installed after 1st january 2000 and the compliance basically is mepc 706040 or mepc 9345 now the regulation of incinerator one more i want to tell you is that as i have told you that the into base which are fed inside the incinerator should be above 850 now it means that that when you were you are introducing the sludge oil during the normal operation in a continuous feed type incinerator in the warm up process the combustion temperature should be above 500 degree celsius so it means what that inside the incinerator this inside the incinerator in the continuous type as i told you that 850 should be a temperature when you are feeding it and after that you are maintaining 850 to 1200 for a continuous type but for warming it up the sludge oil can be fed from 500 but it should start to burn in 850 okay just see here the introduction of sludge oil generated during the normal operation of a ship into a continuous type feed type incinerator during warm up process at combustion temperature above 500 degrees celsius in order to achieve normal combustion operation of 850 and as i told you it should not be more than 5 minutes 600 degrees celsius okay so this is the rules and regulation of the incinerator so friends in today's video if you think i have given you something then please do subscribe and please do like and please do watch our other videos i guarantee i have made this channel only so that you can get benefit for your examination so please help us by subscribing and sharing the video thank you friend